This will be your first game against a Division II opponent. Um, how does the style of play differ based on playing different levels? You've had games against one FCS, three yeah. Division three, NAI, and now Division two. What what changes uh, from week to week based on those types of opponents? Well, I think uh, what the common thread that I see when you're playing Division two teams versus perhaps maybe an NAI, obviously D three, and then the FCS school is uh, you know Dixie is has just got size across the board, and they obviously look the part, and uh, you know, there's a there's a, a quality athlete that you're getting, uh, and not to take anything away from the teams we've played because there's, I think you took it McPherson. I thought they were a good sized team. I thought uh, you know with the, the running backs, Trayvon Jones, athletic. So I'd say um, where the NAI and Division Two cross over in similarity is in that they have um, uh, the size factor in there and I think you know you get a, a little more consistent with the division two on that so we're excited about Dixie though you know it's a it's, it's basically essentially a league game for us so mm-hmm. we're kind of going to get ourselves into the GNAC next year yeah and, and I guess continue to expand on that how much does it excite you and your coaches and then your players to, to be playing a future conference opponent and getting a taste of that yeah you begin to you know get, begin to have a familiarity of a, of, a, of a league opponent you know we have never had a league now we're going to be the only Division II football team in the whole entire Southwest. Now you have a GNAG league you're getting yourself into, Dixie being their closest uh, Division II opponent. So it, that's, that's exciting. And, and you know, we're pretty proud to be a part of a, a future member of the GNAG. And so this is going to be good to kick it off this way. And then uh, after six ro- home games, now you're going on the road. What, what do you have to do differently to prepare for a game on the road? Yeah, well, the road, you know, we, we've, we've had enough road travels over the last few years to understand is that the, the road demands uh, a little bit more of a focus. It, it demands uh, a, lot more, a little more attention to detail. Um, it's the field's the same size, uh, it's just, you know, different climate, however that may be. Everybody can look into the home and home versus a road. And uh, uh, we understand is that it's just a little bit more of a focus that goes into it. What we enjoy about the road is you get to be with the team um, with just focusing on football. And I think some of our best memories come from how we travel, uh, where, we've, <clears throat> where we've traveled to. And I think we do a very good job here at our university, uh, make sure that we, we travel well and we travel uh, with what the resources that we need so our team members go and they can have a fun time together. And just a, it's a real intimate setting for us. So it, it's also something I'm looking forward to, to be honest with you. You've got three road games in the last four. What what kinds of things are you looking uh, – how, how would you evaluate your team through these four games? What, what kinds of things do you expect do you need to see? We, you want to see right now that we don't begin to stray away from the fundamentals of football. Um, you know, I think it's the, the, where some people can make a mistake is you start to, to get uh, – focused on the schematic issues of football and which you know right now everybody's kind of looking hey what's that extra play you could put in the extra blitz you could put in and those are all fine but you know it only can go your capacity still remains the same which is how how well can my players um, execute their fundamentals so you don't want to stray away from that you know I know your our team is starting to develop its own identity which is an exciting brand of football they believe in each other but as this thing goes on, as people get excited about the season, you can't stray away from those vital few components that make your fundamentals. And as they come together, that's how you play great football instead of focusing on just the macro perspective. Coach, going off of that, you've got a couple uh, NAIA schools uh, on the schedule to finish up the, the season on the road. Um, yeah. You've already played a couple of NAIA teams. How important was that just as our last year's an independent um, you know, to get some of those NAI teams on the schedule and really show the strength of schedule for the rest of the, uh, the NAI. Yeah, that, uh, that's a great question because it's, it's always been, as an independent and being this far west as an independent, uh, that people have called to question our scheduling because they don't, you know, the, whether it's the, the committees out there who evaluate scheduling, they look at it and they just don't have any sense of reference for who you're playing because they haven't played these opponents and they don't even play some of the opponents that played our opponents. And so to be able to, to pull a team like Weber, uh, a KCAC school like McPherson, and to play well, to give now 
those uh, voters and raiders a, a opportunity to uh, to give a reference and for them to see the film what's happening. So that now it's really important. Now, also in the back half, being able to play a team like Southern Oregon and Menlo at the end, you know, you want to we're, we're you know we're getting ourselves into an NAIA playoff picture. You know, you want to be able to see yourself against any NAIA opponents, and so that gives us a great opportunity to do that and to be able to show what we're what we can do. Uh, and then now you get you got to play the game. And then what uh, what's been the key uh, or the catalyst for this five game winning streak that you guys are on? Has there been a common thread in all of those wins? Yeah, I think it's it's like we were saying. It's a, it's the seniors demanding of their teammates and their peers, the coaches. Uh, demanding it the way, and there's a culture of demanding is that we take care of the details throughout the week. Um, every week is a season for us, and when you're an independent, it's exactly that's the truth. And so, right now, our entire focus is just on Dixie. And so, we're, like we, I've said it before, we're at the bottom of the hill right now, and there's a lot of hard work that has to happen uh, before you go into uh, this game on Saturday. And that's if you're looking for any kind of common thread, and what I'm proud of most is that our team understands the concept of process. They understand the fundamentals of process. Each of them has been tasked with their own area within the process that they need to specialize in. They need to take it, uh, to sharpen up each week. And are you know from the least to the greatest, uh, you have people who are paying attention to that and not trying to look ahead. Because in the you know, the concept of time can change for a college football player in midseason in that. You know, Tuesday can seem like the game is so far away. Monday is so far away. And so you can, um, you know, you've been around where people start to lose attention for those details. And, you know, and then all of a sudden people want to crank it up on Thursday and Friday. Everybody loves Fridays and everybody loves game days. But if you don't pay attention to what's going on Monday through, through Friday, that Saturday um, is going to expose you. And, and, Coach, looking forward to this week, you look at their their offense. They don't really have anything that sticks out. They they run the ball. They pass the ball. Uh, but what's their identity? What what's gonna What are you guys gonna key in on coming yeah. up? No, Dixie is. I think is starting to find, um, starting to trying to starting to find their voice. Starting to find their identity. In this last game, they were to put up uh, some points. You know, um, Stephon Conwell has been now the their new quarterback. He's a younger quarterback coming in. You know, he can run the ball well. I think he uh, he has a live arm that he can th- make the throws. They're, um, you know, they're a multiple offense, but now you're starting to find them become uh, able to, to find a bit of a schematic scheme that fits with them. And so, so offensively, you're starting to see that, and I think uh, Safan's been a catalyst for them on that. Defensively, they're a 3-4 defense that um, you know, becomes a bit multiple with the coverages. Uh, but you're finding um, the, that their, their D-line particularly is starting to, to – uh, Know, try to assert themselves. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed with Sio Seumi and how he plays. And you know, they have guys there that can that can make you pay for mistakes. They have guys there that can uh, that can get after you. So, um, in all this, is that I think Dixie's starting to find who they are, and you know, and I anticipate their very best game on Saturday. You know, Dixie, their last game, I think they gave up 60 points. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you bring in one of the top scoring offenses in the NEI. Yeah. Uh, is, is Coach Carlton excited about this week, uh, being able to, to bring the offense out there and oh, maybe maybe have another shootout like uh, like they had last week? Well, I think, I think it, it goes back to what I said earlier. That, you know, the, even though we've consistently put up the points that we have put up, Coach Carlton does a very good job of leading the offense and keeping their focus on the fundamentals, keeping them on, hey, let's take it one play at a time. Um, he keeps a very high standard over there. And I think it reflects the entire team and the standard that we have of, um, you know, we want to be excellent in everything we do. And if a scoreboard reflects that, hey, we, we, we blew them out, we did well offense, defense, and special forces, that's outstanding. Um, if it means that uh, we got to get ourselves in a shootout to win the game, great. If it means that defense has to, to, to you know, keep them uh, low scoring to win the game, great. Football is a wild, wild sport, and that's why we all love it. And so we're preparing not necessarily to put up stats. We're preparing to play our best game. And we know that within the four quarters, multiple scenarios will present themselves. And I think I'm proud of my staff and how they've handled each scenario as it's come along. And what uh, is there, having played Dixie in the past, having mm-hmm. 
seeing their film, is there any type of game that you would expect to, to see this week? Well, you know, Dixie has always been a physical team, and it's uh, now going our fourth time playing them. Uh, one thing I've kind of, you know, always enjoyed the game against Dixie's. It's always been competitive games against Dixie's, and so they, uh, you know, they give us an, a, a worthy opponent, and it's it's something we're excited for. And so, you know, it's it's also great to not have the bus too far, you know, with the six hours there. And, <laughs> Yeah, but it's an exciting, it's an exciting brand of football. I'm, I'm excited for the game, but we know we, we know we got a lot of work to do between now and then. Coach, going back to uh, just kind of some of the keys to this win streak, and uh, you mentioned some of the senior guys, the veterans, and obviously a lot of key positions, quarterback, safety guys that um, are really stepping up and that have been in your program. Um, how important are some of the younger guys as well that have been stepping up at different positions and, yeah. and just how they've been meshing with the veterans? Well, it gets it's twofold. One, it's because the veterans understand the standard. It's because the veterans are casting the vision in the locker room. The, the, in those those conversations that a coach is never privileged to, the veterans seem to be uh, holding a very high standard to the uh, to what has to happen. And so now when you have peers casting visions for these younger guys, um, the younger guys are quickly wanting to get on board and, and support what is, I think, one of the, an outstanding senior class. So um, it, it's, it's very critical to getting the passing the baton about and keeping the culture alive to this next generation that's younger coming up. And so now, um, when you have the leadership that you have that we have with our seniors, uh, it's it's outstanding and it's critical to the to bringing it up. And our young guys are, are coming up to speed with everything and they're begin to uh, they're playing more like veterans. You know, I'd say right now going into game seven, we don't have any young guys anymore. You know, it's everybody's seen enough action that's going to see action, and now it's time for everybody to start. Uh, putting their putting their full uh, their their full capacity on the plate for us all, so this team can continue to be better. And we feel like we're there's more room for us to grow, a lot of room for us to grow. And so the young guys are a big part of it. And our players this week uh, are going to be challenged to to see themselves or who they are and where we're at. And uh, you know, and that's they need to take the take out the challenge and begin to grow this thing and keep going.